Good morning, Reefers. I'm Daniel, and today we are doing water testing. It's important to do water testing, especially when you're dosing in a fragging system, because things tend to change very quickly. When you're cutting corals, and when you're selling corals, and you're fragging, the system tends to have high demands for calcium one day, and then a low demand the next day, and then a high demand for magnesium, so you never really know. So it's kind of like you have to test every week just to kind of alter your dosing accordingly. As long as you stay within your parameters, you're not shocking your corals, you're not spiking your system, everything's okay. That's why I like the dosing so much, because it does do it over time and it's not just a rapid increase, as opposed to dumping in you know, a measuring cup or something. So and it does it over a nice, evenly dis you know, dispersed time and format. So anyway, so here, here we go. I just want to show you guys a few things about the test kits. I do use a uh, different variety of test kits. My alkalinity, I always go right to the Hanna checker because you only have to use one reagent with a sample and it's super easy. You push the button and you get your alkalinity every time. So I'm really happy with that test kit so far. Um, but as far as the phosphates and the nitrates, we have these weird test kits still. I had an ultra low phosphate Hanna checker, um, but I actually lent it to somebody so I don't have it with me at the moment. But my magnesium, I still have to do the titration method. You still have to count. Um, it's not so bad. Once you do it a few times, you really get the hang of it. But, but anyway, so t water testing is super important. You really want to know your system. Um, I tell people, don't dose something if you can't test for it. And that's kind of a common rule because people tend to overdose stuff. Um, things that are good can become very bad if you add too much. You can burn your corals with alkalinity, raising it too high too fast. Not adding it to a sump and adding it directly to your main tank can be pretty bad. So I just wanted to do a quick video. I really don't want to go into too much as water testing. Just kind of wanted to get some feedback from people, see what you guys think um, as far as the test kits and what you like. But also I wanted to let you guys know, those of you who watched this video, um, comment in the bottom for those who want to win the Fido, Fido tank, I am going to just randomly choose a comment and ship it out on Friday. So we'll see how many people watch the video and comment, and then it'll just be luck of the draw. So good luck anyone who wants a Fido tank. Just say so in the comments, and you'll be entered into my quick contest. But um, yeah, make sure you guys water test. Do your water changes. Tank maintenance is crucial. If you don't take care of your system, it will come back to haunt you and things do tend to build up over time and all of a sudden you notice just everything's rapid decay, things are dying, your tank's a mess and then you want to do 55 water changes trying to clear everything back up. So stay up on your game, this is a process, it's very easy to keep a nice aquarium and you just follow some simple rules. There are times where your tank will crash and things will be unavoidable, like power outages. But stay positive. Anyone who's watching this video that has a tank crash problem and lost everything and is heartbroken, I will put together a special custom pack for you. So, you know, for a reasonable price, what I'm saying is I'll give you corals. If your tank crash, you ain't got nothing. Um, I'll just pick a bunch of pieces that I have multiple frags of and kind of just like hook you up with a special ultra pack. So that's something I usually do for people. Um, you know, they range around two, three hundred bucks, but it'll get, get you back on your feet with a whole bunch of frags. So, so anyway, all right guys, have a wonderful day. I think tomorrow for you I have the polytoxin video and then later in the week I'll have the Aptasia video. So that'll be pretty fun. Um, I'm sure anyone who's been in the hobby long enough has used Life Rock, has had an Aptasia problem, has noticed. So I still have a couple stragglers in here from using the Aptasia X, which seemed to burn and kill some corals. And the Aptasia that I killed came right back twice as big. So there's the display. Yeah, I can't wait to do a full tour of the display. I have to do that this week. Everything is looking gorgeous. The acros I just added are stunning. I am absolutely obsessed with my SPS again. I said I wasn't going to get back into SPS and I couldn't resist. So that's why I need multiple tanks. 
you can't really have just a mixed reef. Everything is different. I couldn't put these things in a mixed reef. They would devour and destroy it. So. Yeah, see this anemone? He is creeping on my new acro. I may have to go in there and feed this anemone or change the current just to blow it to keep him back down. So, anemones are awesome, but they need their own rock to stay on. Once you start putting other corals on the rock, they will tend to bump into them sometimes. But don't let that discourage you from getting an anemone. They are cool as hell and fun to watch. Just check out these Duncans. Massive Duncans. Don't forget to post a comment below if you guys are interested in that Fido tank. And as always, thanks for watching and happy reading. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend, and thank you for being part of the Coralist community.